Bloom, Coach Byron here, they're gonna speak about their experiences. So please, as they talk, be prepared for some questions, and then we'll have a, a Q&A session um, when they're done speaking. Thank you guys. Cool. Thank you guys for having us. We really appreciate it. Uh, hopefully you guys don't fall asleep during this thing. Hopefully this is a little bit more energizing. We can tell some stories, maybe laugh a little bit, and uh, we can give you guys a couple nuggets of uh, helping you out whatever careers you go down, right? Um, well, no matter what skill or what career that you go down, everything that you're going to do is about people, right? It's the networking, it's the people skills, it's being able to communicate, it's being able to provide value, which is what we talk a lot uh, with the bananas. So. Um, we're going to kick this thing off, me and Byro, um, just to tell our background story real quick, and then from there we're going to answer some questions, open it up. Um, some of you guys probably have some um, steaming questions about the bananas and how we operate and some crazy things that you guys have seen on social media, so we'd love to answer those too uh, as well. Uh, my name is Tyler Gillum. I am from small town Oklahoma. Uh, so if any of you guys are from a small town, um, I can tell you all those stories of what a small town looks like and back roading and all those good things. Um, I'm from Ada, Oklahoma, uh, also the home of Blake Shelton. Anybody heard of Blake Shelton? Okay, uh, Blake's small town guy just like I am. So um, grew up um, where uh, my dad, my, my dad was a bull rider, my mom was a cheerleader. So. As soon as I was born in 1986, nobody put any bets in Vegas that I was going to win any academic awards with those two people as my parents. Uh, a bull rider who's crazy as hell. Um, you know, it's not if you get hurt, it's when and how bad, and then uh, the stereotype of the cheerleader. Uh, but I learned a ton from both of those toughness and uh, servant leadership. Um, also got a an opportunity uh, that I didn't realize, which was an opportunity at the time to hang out with another famous person, a guy named Eddie Collins. Anybody ever heard of Eddie Collins? All right. Nobody, okay? He's not that famous, but I'll tell you what he is, is in 2021, he became the nation's winningest baseball coach. He won more games than any high school baseball coach in America. All right. He taught me a lot about baseball. He taught me a lot more about life. And he won a lot of baseball games. He won 2,100. 16 baseball games. Um, so I joke about him being famous because you would think the guy that won most baseball games, everybody would know him. Um, not necessarily true. But the impact that he had on the people that he coached every day in his life, all those people look at him as heroes. That he is a hero to them. And so um, massive impact. Um, so at the time, I didn't realize how important he was in my life and how he played a role in my coaching. So all you guys are going into coaching. Uh, what, I sh what I saw from Coach Collins every day who helped me get on the straight and narrow was the ability to show up every day, outwork everybody, uh, not be scared to get dirty, um, but have core values of sticking to who you are and what you believe in and be able to uh, be a servant leader every single day. And I think that's what leadership and coaching is. And we all do some type of leadership and coaching, whether you're big brother, big sister, or any of those things. And so um, we'll talk about some of those philosophies today. Um, played college baseball from there. Um, got into um, coaching and directly led into um, me moving to Phoenix, Arizona. Coached in Phoenix, Arizona for junior college for 11 years. And then I uh, started coaching summer collegiate baseball. So I coached uh, Texas Collegiate League. I coached in the prestigious Cape Cod League. And then I got the head coaching job in 2018 with the Savannah Bananas. Um, and then from there, we've just been building what the bananas are. And now we're into banana ball, and I'm full time with the bananas now. So that's a short snippet, a little bit of my story. Byro? Awesome. Thanks. So I didn't know the story. Adam, my name's Adam Byron. They call me Coach Byro. Um, nobody can pronounce my last name, including your professor. So back in high school, my teammates gave me the nickname of Viro. Um, I like it, it kind of works. So um, I didn't know those stories about Tyler. And I'm, as I'm sitting here listening to him and getting ready to talk to you about, hey, you guys are on college. Some of you want to go into coaching. Some of you have no idea what you want to do. Some of you have an idea of what you might want to do, whatever. Um, we both ended up in the same place. 
in a lot of our stories, we didn't grow up in the same hometown. I'm much older than him. Um, but a lot of our story of how we got here overlapped. And Tyler talking about Mr. Collins and being a big impact on him. And at that time, he probably didn't realize how much of an impact he was going to have on Tyler and his coaching career. Um, I had similar impacts. So I want to ask you a question. Um, raise your hand if you have a coach that you have a horrible memory of or a horrible experience. Cool. Keep your hands up. How many of you also have a very vivid memory of a coach that had a phenomenal impact on you? If you don't, drop your hand. All right, cool, awesome. Hopefully, hopefully, and, I, and same here, we all can remember these coaches who had these like horrible experiences um, on whatever it was, playing time, they were mean to us, they yelled at us, whatever. But we all have those people, and it's phenomenal that you guys all have your hands up, that there was somebody who impacted you. Okay. For me, that was Coach Thomas, my high school baseball coach. At the time, I had no idea the impact he was going to have on me that I take every single day. Okay. I also had people that had, were a horrible influence on me. The beautiful thing is, I took things from that coach as well. What I'm getting at is, as you go on with your career, as you sit in these classes and you listen to these coaches talk, um, you can learn something from every single experience and every coach that you come across. You can be like, hey, that really resonated with me. Or man, that didn't make me feel very good, but here's how I can adjust that. And so as you go into your career, and some of you guys are going to be wanting to be coaches, um, we have stolen everything we do from people that we have learned from. All right? And one thing I can tell you about Tyler, and certainly is true for me, um, we learn from every single person that we come in contact with. And me specifically, I learned from Coach Thomas, who talked to us about, who taught me about how to communicate, how to understand how I am as a human being. Okay. I also learned from this phenomenal coach, um, Coach Kyle Wagner, um, as I got further on in my um, my career and started my coaching career, actually, um, on how to communicate. But um, so I I, I I lead with that because as we are giving you our stories. Um, very important to see how, if, if there's anything that resonates with you, but more importantly, hey, you know what, I kind of like what they said. I like how they, you know, that path that they went through. My path is very different than Tyler's. Okay, I grew up in Omaha, Nebraska, um, and uh, wanted to be a major league baseball player. Okay, like so many of us uh, that played baseball, that's what I wanted to do. I learned to play the game uh, by going to the College World Series that's played every year in Omaha, Nebraska. I learned so much about just what those players look like, what those coaches said, um, and it really kind of energized me to want to become a baseball player. Um, went to play in college, um, at a junior college down in Kansas called Fort Scott, Kansas. That was the only opportunity that I had coming out of high school. Um, I did my best. I um, did pretty good enough to get a scholarship to go play at George Mason University. Um, I was a catcher and, and, and had a pretty good career. And then like so many of us, I had a career in the injury. Um, at that time, I was at a crossroads. I only saw myself as a professional baseball player. That's how I identified. But when the injury happened, uh, life caught up very, very quickly, and I had to figure it out. Right? Going through college, I was only going to school um, to be a baseball player. All right, that I grew up in a, a, a group, a family of educators. You would have thought that um, I would have kind of been like, you know what? I got a plan for a career after baseball. I really didn't care about college. I, I was going to be a major league baseball player, and that's what I was going to do. Um, the reality is that was a very, very uh, bad basket to put all my eggs in. But um, very quickly, I realized I need to do something. So um, I'm 48 years old, probably the age of some of your parents. When I was growing up, there was this movie uh, that came out called Jerry Maguire. Has anybody ever seen this movie or even heard of Jerry Maguire? Right? Um, that fired me up because Jerry Maguire was played by Tom Cruise. And he was this hot shot sports agent in Hollywood. All right? And it was like amazing. And that's what I wanted to do. And that's what I was going to do. Keeps me in time um, close to sports. But I needed to figure out how to get there. And so as I was bartending and, and waiting tables and trying to figure it out, I realized, hey, I'm going to go to law school. Because if I 
you know, law degree, that's going to help you negotiate, negotiate contracts, and it's going to give you the sports agency, and this, that, and the other. So I went to law school. Um, law school's tough. Who's thinking about going to law school? Nobody. Good for you. Um, <laughs> it's hard. Uh, there's a lot of lawyers out there. So I went to law school, and I graduated. And when I was in law school, um, I was constantly thinking, how am I going to be able to apply this to, to be, become a sports agent? How am I going to bridge that gap? And um, talking to sports agents and, and learning the business, I realized after a year and a half of law school, that is not the industry. That's not the profession I want to go into. Fine. I graduated, got my law degree, I passed the New York State Bar, um, and I practiced law for 10 years. I did labor and employment, I represented uh, individuals, uh, so they were like civil rights cases, unemployment cases, on, on paid wage cases. And I hated every second of it. It wasn't right for me. Because I didn't really know what I was getting into. I just knew that there was this end, there was this Hollywood uh, idea in my head of Jerry Maguire that I wanted to, I wanted to become. Um, but, you know, here I was practicing law. I did that for 10 years, and I knew right away it wasn't right for me. I mentioned earlier, I come from a history or a, a, a long line of educators. I realized while I was practicing law that I really like educating people. I like talking to my clients and educating them on what is and what isn't. Okay? So, I decided I'm not going to practice law anymore. And so, while I was figuring out my next move, I was like, what should I do? My father was like, well, you like teaching and you like coaching, so why don't you go coach at high school? And so, you know, um, my ego was getting the best of me. I didn't want to go to college. I didn't want to coach in high school. I wanted to go coach at the highest level. I wanted to be dropped on top of the mountain, which, uh, newsflash, that doesn't happen. Um, and we're going to talk about our, you know, our, our kind of struggles uh, through our lives, but um, so the next best option for me, uh, since you know Vanderbilt wasn't going to give me the head coaching job right off the rip, I started coaching youth baseball in New York City. And now here's the thing, um, you all probably played youth sports <coughs> at some level, um, probably not the most peaceful kind of existence, kind of got a little crazy, parents are fighting, umpires are fighting, um, and in New York City, it is um, pretty wild out there. Families are um, a little challenging, to say the least. But you know what? I wanted to start coaching. So my best, I, uh, I had no idea how to get into it. I looked on Craigslist, which I don't even know if it's around anymore. And uh, I found a, I Googled baseball jobs. And one popped up in New York City. And it was like, and it said, New York City Upper East Side Baseball Academy. Sounds fancy. Right? I'm like, cool, let's do this. So I show up, I still had suits, I show up in a suit to a public school on the Upper East Side in a very, very underprivileged area, unfortunately. And I walk in and it's a school gym about the size of this room right here with two batting cages and turf that's rolled out. And I walked in, I'm like, this doesn't seem like the most prestigious Upper East Side batting academy. Um, but nonetheless, I'm there. I had an interview. Um, at the time, this guy, uh, Nate Fisher, became my best friend, um, which is ironically how I met Tyler. We're going to talk about connections and relationships. Um, sat down with me at a table just like this. And he said to me, um, you played Division I baseball. You were a lawyer. You're wearing a suit. I feel bad offering you this job, but you can have it if you want it. I was like, cool, man. This is amazing. Um, so I took the job, and I took the job not because it was the right fit, but it was a start. It was a start for me to figure out, do I even like coaching? And so um, I did that for 12 years. Um, I, I learned a lot from every single person I came in contact with, and then that led me to new opportunities. Um, that led me to an opportunity of meeting Tyler Gillum in Cape Cod. We had breakfast one day when I was up there visiting Nate. Um, Tyler mentioned, hey, I'm going to go work for this job. Have you guys ever heard of the bananas? And I was like, yeah, man, I think I saw something about a first base coach dancing or something like that. And he's like, yeah, they do crazy things. I'm thinking about doing that because it's totally different. I'm like, you go do you, man. And then two years later, um, uh, they started Banana Ball. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But they hired um, Nate Fish to be the head coach of the bananas for that premier team, that pro team. Tyler was coaching the college team at that time. 
and Nate brought me in as an assistant coach. I literally showed up um, without an offer, without anything, without any expectations of pay, but I knew that this was going to be a great experience and I was going to learn. All right? So I showed up, no expectation, and um, had a great experience, loved what was going on, and I wanted to be a part of it. So went back to New York, continued to coach, um, and then an opportunity came next year to be to hop on for their second tour with the party animals. I was the uh, manager of the party animals for our second world tour. And then that led me to my current position, which is, um, for lack of better terms, director of baseball operations. Um, I am not the head of that department. It is a big collaborative effort. And then I also coach with the bananas. Um, the one thing that I have learned along the way, and Tyler touched on this, is it's all about relationships. It's all about connections. And you start making those today. Um, here's how you make those, make those connections. Um, you go up and you introduce yourself and you start talking to people. That's what it is. Um, we got a guy in class right now who um, did that to me uh, when I was coaching with the Bananas and he came up and he introduced himself and he said, hey, I'm Bryson Wheeler. I work in merch right now as an intern, but you know what, if there's any opportunities for me in the baseball department, um, I'd like to be considered. And it started right there. And so, um, what will get you from point A to whatever your top of the mountain is, whatever point B is, it starts with the introduction. It starts with the, hi, this is who I am. Um, what's going to keep you there is value, providing value. And here's how you guys can learn value. You're in school right now, and you're listening to Tyler and me give you, you know, a little bit of history. Um, we are giving you value. Okay, you're learning from us. It may not be a lot of value, but there's something you can take away from today. Um, and the one thing that I did, and, um, and I know Tyler does this better than anybody, is we have what's called a growth mindset. Has anybody ever heard that term before? Growth mindset? What does it mean? What does it mean to you? Uh, it means uh, like to uh, basically uh, always like challenge your beliefs and constantly build upon, upon them and like to grow. Yeah. You nailed it, man. What's your name? Uh, TJ. Nice job, TJ. I also have minor in psychology. So. Right on. There you go, man. You picked me apart right away. <laughs> yeah. um, challenging your beliefs. Um, so, as a coach, um, we we know what we know. Um, we learn a lot. We discard a lot, and we hold on to what we believe, what we what 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 we like in that moment something to change, okay? And so from a growth mindset standpoint, um, we all have our ideals, uh, but I always say this, ego is the enemy. If you think you know everything, uh, bang, you're gonna get humbled really quick because I literally have never met anybody who knows everything. I've met a lot of people who have learned pretty close to everything and then they distilled and took out what they like. And so having a growth mindset from a coaching standpoint or really any walk of life is critical. You need to listen to people. You need to attend conferences. You need to find out people online. You guys have all this information at your fingertips to, I want to be a baseball coach. I want to learn about hitting. Let me find out who's the best hitting coach out there. Let me listen to them, all right? Don't take it as gospel. Take it as a learning opportunity. Does this resonate with me? Can I use this? This is what my belief system is. But you learn from as many people as you can, and you build up this resume of information, and then, you use it, and then you learn, and you use it, and you learn. And so, um, Kyle Wagner taught me. Um, I mentioned him earlier. He was a hitting coach. I had no idea about hitting. I learned about Kyle Wagner because there was this Little League baseball team uh, about seven years ago um, from, from Redland, Pennsylvania, that set the Little League World Series record for home runs. They were literally hitting a one home run every three and a half at-bats. I was like, what is happening down there? And so what I did, I got online, I Googled, Go Wags, baseball, Kyle Wagner. And I found Kyle Wagner, and literally three weeks later, I was down in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, learning hitting for, from the person that I thought was on the right path. And so, um, whatever you want to do, wherever you want to lead your, your coaching career to lead, um, it's up to you to pave that road. All right, create your own path. And you do that by learning, by failing, by testing, and then you get to a point where, um, hey man, you know, I kind of got it figured out a little bit, and then quickly realize, oh, there's something else out there. And so having a growth mindset is very important. Um, 
And uh, that's kind of my current status. So right now, um, with the bananas full time, I love it. Um, and I get to work with my newest best friend, second best friend, Nate Fisher. Um, so that's who I am. My path is a little bit different. And so, Tyler, do you have anything you want to add on what I said, or should we open up to questions, or? Yeah, we can do, we can do all those. I, I'll, I'll give you guys this. So as Byro's talking, me and him are, um, we're always on the same page and think a lot alike in a lot of different ways. And what he was talking about is networking, right? And so all of you guys have an idea of what you want to do in the future and what that looks like. Who are those people that you look up to? Is it a strength and conditioning coach? Is it a firefighting captain or chief? What is it in your field you're like, man, that guy right there, or that person right there is legit and I would love to learn from those people, all right? There's that saying out there that it's, it's not what you know, it's who you know. You guys heard that? That's bull crap too. It's who knows you, who knows you, all right? If no strength and conditioning coaches in the world know who you are, they're not gonna hire you for an internship, right? So how do you get in front of those people? Right? You send emails, you make phone calls, you figure out what that networking looks like. So when I was y'all's age, I graduated with my master's degree, master's degree in education, with an emphasis in um, kinesiology, sports administration. Right? And I said, I want to be a division one coach. Where's the best way that I can learn, grow, and network? And those three things have been my North Star since day one. Learn grow, network. Where can I get into environments where I can learn, grow, and network? All right? Because the networking piece is going to help. Somebody's going to pick up the phone and they're going to go, hey, um, I heard you got a strength and conditioning job open. I've got an intern that's legit. He would be perfect for this job. And his buddy that's on the other line that's the strength and conditioning coach at University of Georgia goes, dude, Thank you so much for calling me. I'm, I've been trying to find this guy, and I trust who you are. Let's hire that dude. That's how that's how guys get jobs, right? All right. These big time coaching jobs, you don't that they show up on on Google where it says um, you can apply for the Georgia Southern head football coach job, right? The the hundred of thousands of people that put in for that job, those aren't the people that are getting that job. That job's already been filled. That's just the process that the school has to go through, all right? It's the five phone calls that the athletic director said, hey, I'm looking for the next head football coach, who's that guy, all right? And then he's calling another buddy, he's calling another buddy. So your networking system is what's gonna get you your jobs, right? Once people know who you are, then they're gonna learn, hey, what is he, what is he good at, right? What is she good at? What are the skills that align with what I'm looking for? So I just talked to a guy yesterday from McNeese. Um, he's the manager of the baseball team at uh, University of McNeese. And what I told him is learn to be a generalist in all areas of strength and conditioning. I said baseball for him specifically. But you need to learn to be a specialist in something. What are you the most passionate about in your field, right? Is it, you know, there's some PT people in here. Is it ankles? Is it shoulders? Is it hip mobility, right? Athletic training, what, what's the best thing that you can be at where you can be a specialist and the best in the world at? Because people will recognize you from that, but you need to be able to talk in all generalities of the specific thing. So it's not about what you know, it's not about who you know, it's who knows you that's gonna help you get those next jobs. So you gotta put yourself out there, go to clinics, go to conferences, pick up the phone and just show up. Show up and go learn from some people. Because I can promise you, if you're like, hey, you know, I know you're legit at strength and conditioning, I wanna come shadow you for a week. That's what I did with Eric Cressy. He's one of the best strength and conditioning coaches in the world, right? Um, it'll be a fly on the wall. Um, because the people that you're reaching out to, they were in the same boat as you. Let's keep rolling, yeah. Yeah, do you guys have to do internships as part of your program? Like, yeah? Cool. So um, so did I. And so did everybody who uh, you may end up looking up to from a strength and conditioning or coaching standpoint. Um, they all did internships. Bill Belichick did an internship. All right, and he's one of the winningest coaches of all time. And so 
um, those internships, they don't just get dropped off on your, 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 your place. Go create those opportunities. And literally, we all, you, you create those opportunities. Um, literally just going up and shaking somebody's hand and introducing and talking to them. Um, and, and showing an interest in what they do. We all want to talk about, hey, what do you want to talk about, right? You want to talk hitting, you want to talk about coaching, you want to talk about law, you want to talk about the bananas, whatever. If you show an interest, you then become interesting to that individual. And, um, and, and, and additionally, all of these, these high level coaches, they're all very, very personable and they all want to help because they understand that this, that there was somebody out there who helped them. There was somebody out there who gave them some knowledge to help them get to where they are. So people are very, very helpful. Um, I would say that I was never good, um, but as you can tell by my career path, I was never good at just creating, knowing where I wanted to go and then creating this like these building blocks that continue to go up. My career path is, is, is up and down and and I think that's, there's some stats out there that they say most people will go through like three or four different careers in their lifetime. All right, cool. Um, to me, that's an indication that people just have no idea what they want to do. Or they don't know the building blocks to kind of like where to start and how to end. A lot of people like, like this guy right here has done a phenomenal job of having a vision in his head and then creating blocks on to get to that vision and he's off and running. And so the, the sooner you can kind of, hey, you know what, this really resonates with me and I can see myself, my future self, as this person, the sooner you can do that, um, the better it's gonna be for you to identify, hey, I mean, this is the path. Because right now there's so many roads going everywhere and that's fine. If you don't know right now, then the best way to figure it out is talk to people, get in the environment. If you think you wanna work in professional sports, um, start talking to people who work in professional sports. If you think you want to be, you know, a general manager of a, a soccer team, talk to a general manager of a soccer team. There is that information out there. You don't have to talk to them personally, but additionally, if you find them online, they'll all have their email address, they'll all have Instagram or Twitter or whatever, and you can reach out to them and, and learn. But the sooner you can start kind of crystallizing this in your head and seeing it, then you can start building towards it. Um, and so, um, you know, does, does any of this make sense? Does anybody have any questions over what we kind of discussed up until this point about our careers, our paths, <coughs> anything that we've talked about? No, it's all good. Well, yeah, what do you got? I'll say thank you for sharing about how to get started. Because that's a lot of questions that we get is, what's that first step I have to do? And getting involved is so important. I think some people are afraid of rejection as well, that also comes with it. But so many people always say, well, I want to coach baseball, but I don't know how to get started. And starting at that low point is kind of your best option. Just getting your foot in the door, I think it's hard for some of us to maybe sometimes accept those or have to put in that work. But, I mean, even with the speakers we've had previously, I mean, these guys were assistant coaches for small schools, um, making, you know, $10,000 a year. So, I mean, it's, it's part of the process, and it doesn't start off always that easy, but getting your foot in the door is so important for, for, for coaching or any job in general. Yeah, it's always learn, grow, and network. Like, um, the first, so I was a GA. I got my master's paper at my school, okay? Um, I was a grad assistant. I made $5,000 my first year of coaching, 2010. My second year, I got a raise. I made $6,500, okay? I was loaded, right? I made that money by doing lessons. I didn't get paid to actually do the job. But the responsibilities that I got is what helped me learn and grow. All right, at 23 years old, I was a recruiting coordinator at a D, uh, D2 baseball school. All right, I coached third base, I ran the offense, and I coached infielders. Those are the things that I wanted to do. There's probably nowhere in the country that would give me those responsibilities at 23 years old. Right. But I did those for free for a long time because I knew that's what I wanted to do. So they were giving me an opportunity and I was getting my master's degree, okay? My forward thinking plan was if I get my master's degree and I go coach at a JUCO or a D2 school, I'm gonna be able to get in the classroom, make a little bit of money, but still be able to coach. I've always wanted to coach since I was a sophomore in high school. Coach Collins 
wanted basically Coach Collins being an impact on my life made me want to coach other people and try to be that impact on their lives, right? 